Let's uh, talk about, an, I, actually, this will have implications for these types of events and issues we're talking about, because everything from prisons to the ability to reverse the just all-consuming ecological crisis, a lot of it is going to depend on the courts. And the Republicans have been uh, packing the courts uh, for quite some time, uh, and uh, there's obviously a much-needed broader left strategy for the court, but now we find ourselves in the midst of this Kavanaugh drama, which as we were covering last night on TMBS, we really went, wanted to sort of run that parallel history of what happened in 1991 with Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas and just the overarching reality of uh, there's been some small steps, there's actually been potentially some back steps, and also that if Kavanaugh is confirmed, and I actually think they might be getting ready to throw this guy over and they could still get a person on the court even if they do uh, pretty easily um, you will have two people who have been I'll put it this way exceedingly credibly alleged to have engaged in um, uh, well let's be I'm not going to say I don't like the phrase sexual misconduct an attempted sexual assault and sexual harassment um, to be really specific you will have two of nine justices um, making cases setting law in a completely democratically unaccountable fashion this is the only moment in a justice's career cycle where they have any type of public accountability they might choose to do tv interviews antonin scalia who was of course a reactionary and a just a thug of the worst order i will say the one thing i will give him he was a frequent speaker on college campuses and sort of generally made himself relatively speaking more available to be argued with but that's completely at his discretion um there's no democratic very little democratic accountability for these people and if there was clarence thomas certainly would have been impeached and removed the conflicts of interest with his far-right political operative wife alone <laughs> uh, mean he should not be on the court uh the chide might be changing though on kavanaugh there's a couple of things sam pointed this out to me yesterday i don't remember whether it was something he noted or somebody else so forgive me but he was talking to me after the show the B team is out to defend Kavanaugh on TV, at least in the last couple of days. You're seeing a lot of kind of like pundit types and other sort of like right wing hacks. You're not seeing a lot of, you know, frontline politicians. You're not seeing a lot of doubling down from the Judiciary Committee. You're even, of course, seeing the kind of usual ambiguous statements from even someone like Lindsey Graham. And uh, now we have Donald Trump adding his ambiguity to the mix and my only read of this is just that all he cares about obviously is this winning and losing perception and protecting his own ass and it seems to me i mean look trump just says stuff so you can't read that much in in some ways but it seems to me that he wouldn't be hinting at this or saying this if he didn't have a sense of maybe this guy's a loser and it's time to pull the plug hopefully the woman will come forward, state her case. He will state his case before representatives of the United States Senate. And then they will vote. They will look at his career. They will look at what she had to say from 36 years ago. And we will see what happens. But uh, I just think uh, he is at a level that we rarely see not only in government, anywhere in life. <laughs> I just want to really underscore, and, I, and, the, and of course he's still supporting Kavanaugh, but I do, I think, especially by Trump standards, even just the saying, and of course, please, there is no praise for Trump in this, but even him just saying she should be heard would not be what I'd expect to hear from him if he's mobbing up for Kavanaugh. The other thing is, and I keep making this point, if he is lying today, which I think he is, we don't know he is, I think he is, I believe her, I don't believe him in this instance, certainly, then it's a live issue today because he's lying about it. If the dude came out at the beginning of his hearings and he said, 35 years ago, I did X, 
this is on the table. Never did anything else like it. I apologize, so on, blah, blah, blah. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm mercenary, and I think there there's far more important things of just getting this guy to not be on the court. So I might still say, screw him. <laughs> but not because I don't buy the principle of people having redemption and nobody being defined by one event in their lives. And, and as I, of course, this isn't going to go anywhere, but obviously I welcome Republicans to the newfound principle that people's teenage conduct should not destroy their lives. Um, it seems to only apply when it's, well, let's actually be really specific, not just a white guy, but a far right white guy who's about to get a Supreme Court seat to lock in 21st century feudalism. Uh, that's when all of a sudden we can look past childish indiscretions. We have people on sex offender registries that they can't get off of for life because they might have been 18 and slept with a 16-year-old, okay? Like, we have 13-year-olds who might have committed a, a really terrible crime serving life sentences with adults. And I don't hear a mumbling word, as Cornell West would say, about any of those things from these people. But that being said, he didn't do that. He's denying it. And there's an exceedingly credible allegation against him and a bizarre weirdo freak friend of his who was also involved supposedly in the incident, allegedly in the incident, who we should also hear more from. So every day he denies it and she says it's so is a day that it's happening now. So that's we can dismiss that talking point quite easily. Well, the thing to watch with Trump saying she should be heard and any of these Republicans is they want her to go under oath before the investigation happens, mm -hmm. the FBI investigation. Right. Which basically means like she's not going to have the benefit of the FBI come and saying, OK, we established this party was here and then. Right. It, it was a long time ago. The way that that process would have went is, yeah, they'd talk about it and they interview some people and then they lay out the facts. But the Republicans want to play this game where if she messes up one of the metadata details, like what, why did you go to this party? Who was throwing the party? Right? They can use it and we played it. And this was Joe Biden's big failure, right? Like those Republicans gutted Anita Hill. And some of the things that they did, they couldn't in the popular media environment they couldn't do as easily today, right? Like asking her like, oh, well, aren't you just upset about your own dating life? And that's why you're going after Judge Thomas, this type of thing. But also, and we'll play Anita Hill in a second, but also um, even if she is telling the truth, I mean, I don't know if this is what they do, but I mean, even she could be telling the truth in all of the kind of correct broad strokes. They could pro... You could you could probably walk anybody into a perjury charge talking about something that happened 35 years ago if you asked the right set of questions and got them to misidentify the right details and then had a retroactive And the insinuations about her motivations are just ridiculous because right. she didn't choose how this played out, right? From her perspective, she might have just said like, well, this happened to me. I'm going to report this to a senator because what happens if there's more reports of this, right? Like, she And has from no all idea how intents this, and purposes, that's actually what she did. That's what she did. That's the only rational read of it. There's Not to mention trauma, particularly sexual trauma, affects the memory. Like this has been shown. So mm. it's pretty unfair to expect her to remember every single detail. And it's also pretty fucked up the way an assailant can simultaneously assault someone and then render them an unreliable witness to their own life. Well, they also there's also the argument that Republicans are playing this and that it is in good faith and they want her to talk. And they've said, well, maybe we'll have our female staffers uh, question her instead of 11 or however many white guys that are Republicans. And Bob Cork even said Republicans extended a hand in good faith. If we don't hear from both sides on Monday, let's vote. And that's like your resistance, Republican. Well, of course, because we all know that they're full of it. And we all know that this is exactly the type of disingenuous fig leaf thing they play. And by the way, I don't know how most how people read it, but I actually look again. It is structurally a problem, the makeup of that Judiciary Committee racially and gender wise and what that reflects about America. But I actually find the specific offer unbelievably condescending yeah. and, well, and infantilizing insulting. to women like that's ridiculous. I don't like that essentialist nonsense from anybody period and the fact that they think that they're making a oh that's a good oh don't worry dear we'll have women talk to you Unelected that's disgusting women. that's disgusting 
They're unelected, but they are women. So they're unelected. But we'll talk. Oh no! Oh, I know. Well, that will trigger. No, what's gonna upset anybody is that you're there, basically trying to destroy her in national press, uh, because you know she came forward and might jeopardize your politics. 